Okay, uh, I hope you have a very nice luncheon, and we're going to have a roundtable meeting. This is the time for us to summarize and what we did for the last three days. There were so many debate and discussion for different topics, but we separately managed our meeting together, so we do not know what kind of conclusion we can get. So for the two hours from this time on, we will discuss and make some conclusion what we did and what kind of implication we can get. And we uh, promise to make a better next year event based on today's communique. The, at the end of this meeting, we're going to make one communique based on your suggestions, which would be made at this moment. And then we have some chance for us to introduce by yourself very briefly. And I'll give a chance from okay, this, way, this side, from Raymond to this way, please. Introduce yourself very briefly. Good afternoon. I'm Raymond Tavares. I'm representing UNIDO, and uh, UNIDO is the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. We co organize this activity and we work on innovation for developing countries, but also emerging countries. Hello everyone, my name is Young Gu Sun. I'm a vice dean of Chungnam National University. I'm also a chemistry professor at Chungnam National University. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Fred Phillips from the University of New Mexico. Yes. Hello, my name is Raven Brochler. I'm from Intrasoft International and also the Vice President of the International Network for Small Medium Enterprises. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mohan from the Nottingham University Business School. Um, in addition to the teaching part, I'm also the Director for Research and Knowledge Exchange in the school, overseeing United Nations principles of responsible education. Good afternoon, my name is Lydia Shin from Boston, United States, uh, representing uh, New England Medical Innovation Center focused on healthcare, global uh, healthcare issue. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Pablo Cello, is, uh, section head of the new project initiatives at CERN. Good afternoon, it's Pablo Redondo from the Spanish delegation uh, with a contribution on creation of startups from basic science. Hello, I am Javier Diaz, co-founder of Seven Solution, a company with a lot of expertise on technology transfer from scientific facilities. Good afternoon, um, Jessica from Seychelles, representing the National Institute of Science, Technology and Innovation. Good afternoon, my name is Shao Lian Zheng. I'm from Shanghai Additive Manufacturing Association. Hello to everybody, my name is Isabel. I'm coming from the city of Malaga. I'm the head of international department and we work on basically on how to improve small and medium-sized enterprises and at the same time how to make our city more smart, even more smart. Good afternoon. I am Wala Ashita from uh, the City for Scientific Research in Alexandria, Egypt. Good afternoon, Mayor Her and the Secretary General. My name is John Cowie. I'm from Brisbane City Council, Australia, and I'm very glad to be here. Good afternoon. My name is Rambold. I defer the Governor of Tarkhawal Varovinsi, Mongolia. Good afternoon. My name is Kambat. I'm advisor to the Governor of Tarkhawal Province, Mongolia. Hello, uh, good afternoon everybody. My name is uh, Yusuf uh, Sulaiman from the Prime Minister's Office of Malaysia. Thank you. 
Well, hello. Uh, I come from the state of Nuevo León in Mexico. Specifically, I work for the Institute, Institute of Innovation and Technology Transfer. Hello. Hi, everybody. John Nugent's my name. I was mayor of Ipswich region from 1988 to when I retired in 2004, and I've been uh, involved with the WTA since it was formed in 1998. Hello everyone, my name is Umar Binder, I'm from Nigeria. My, the rest of my team are standing. Stand up for recognition, please. Uh, my, my, my job now is to translate high-tech smart cities to low-tech community smart communities. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm from uh, Korea, Daejeon. Uh, welcome to this region, and also I'm the uh, CEO of the Techno Park. I already uh, presented about the city of the park, Techno Park, and Smart City Park. So I'm here, and I can share your uh, every experience of this region, Smart City, and Techno Park. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Taina Tukkiainen. I'm the Professor of Corporate Entrepreneurship and Innovation uh, from Finland, uh, from the uh, city of Espoo, which is uh, 10 to 15 kilometers from Helsinki. Lately, I have been also involved with the European Union, the, the European Committee of the Regions, with the all the cities and regions of Europe. Pleasure to be here. Hello, gentle peoples. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, I'm, I'm a president of one of the National Research Institute, Electronic and Telecommunication Research Institute. Uh, I, have, I had a great chance yesterday to moderate the plenary session two, so uh, after my presentation, uh, introduction, I will have a chance to also so summarize uh, what we have discussed actively yesterday. Good day. Hello, everyone. I'm Long, Deputy General Director of Bicamex Corporation in Vietnam and also Director of Smart City Office of Binh Dương Province, a sister city with uh, Taichung. And uh, I'm here to share uh, my point of view and also a case study about the smart city, developing the smart city in emerging country. Um, and a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kelechi Kalu. I'm Professor of Political Science and Vice Provost of International Affairs at the University of California, Riverside. It's been a pleasure meeting most of you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. James Belinsky. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of City Smart. City Smart's an organization focused on improving the sustainability of cities, including our home city, Brisbane, Australia, and I'm very pleased that we are a sister city of Daejeon. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Francisco Javier Cáceres. I am the responsible for innovation and technology transfer at the Institute of Corpuscular Physics in the University of Valencia in Spain and the former general manager of the Spanish Science Industry Association. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Hyo Suk Lui, uh, president elect of the Association of Korean Women Scientists and Engineers, KWSC, and I'm working at Korea Aerospace Research Institute. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hans uh, Tolstrop. I have the pleasure of representing UNESCO at this uh, event. Uh, I'm based in Jakarta uh, at UNESCO's Regional Office for Science for Asia and the Pacific. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. This is turn of a mayor, but he will deliver a congratulatory speech at the same time. So he will speak in Korean. So in front of you, there is a translator. So would you use this one from this time on? He will cut a speech in Korean language. Thank you. 반갑습니다. 
저는 유네스코 오드레이 아줄레이 사무총장님과 더불어서 세계 혁신 포럼의 위원장을 맡고 있는 WTA 회장 허태정입니다. 그동안 사흘 동안의 도시의 미래 발전 전략으로 스마트 시티를 지속 가능성의 관점에서 종해, 조명해보는 시간이었고 또 여러 도시의 실제 사업들의 사례 그리고 기대 효과에 대한 심도 있는 논의를 진행해 왔습니다. 또한 여러 주체들이 함께 참여해서 논의한 기초과학과 창업, 혁신 등도 우리가 계속해서 정부를 공유하고 또 협력해야 할 중요한 이슈들이었습니다. 이제 라운드 테이블 회의를 통해서 지난 이틀간 각 세션별로 다루어졌던 핵심 이슈들 그런 논의들 다시 한번 되짚어보고자 합니다. 또한 오늘 논의가 더 발전되고 지속 가능한 내일을 만들어 나가는 데 있어서도 기여할 수 있도록 실천 약속들을 담은 공동성명서를 채택할 예정입니다. 공동성명서에서는 다음 달 열리는 유네스코 총회에서 공유해서 전 세계에 더 많은 이들에게 전파될 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 지난 이틀간 각 섹션에 함께 참여해 주신 연사와 음, 마더레이터 그리고 세계혁신포럼 운영위원과 WTA 집행위원 여러분들께 이 자리를 통해서 다시 한번 감사 인사를 드립니다. 감사합니다. Uh, thank you, Mayor. He summarized what we are going to do at this session. And the next will come the c o n g r a t u l a t o r speech from h a n s u s t u r from UNESCO. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor t a e j o n g h e uh, Secretary General, uh, delegates and uh, friends and colleagues from uh, around uh, the world. On behalf of uh, UNESCO, uh, our Director General, uh, Ms. Audrey Azoulay, and my colleague, uh, Yoslan Noor, a good friend of many of you, uh, I'd like to offer, uh, on behalf of UNESCO, our congratulations on uh, arriving at this uh, roundtable uh, discussion on the final day of uh, this year's uh, Global Innovation Forum. Uh, I had the pleasure to attend uh, uh, the forum in 2015, uh, also here in, in d a e j o n And if it's been personally for me to come back and to see the growth in the thematic coverage of this group, the geographical coverage, to see new members coming on, both uh, cities, uh, also uh, institutional members of this community, uh, coming together to share their experience, their knowledge. It's a very uh, encouraging uh, and it's a very nice experience for me personally. So I want to thank you all for the opportunity to, to be here. Uh, An innovation forum uh, taking place within the context of a rapidly changing world is going to, to face uh, challenges. And I think this group is, by becoming increasingly diverse, becoming increasingly uh, integrated, is in a very good position to address uh, those challenges. The discussions this week around uh, smart cities and uh, the people-centered smart cities, putting uh, people, putting culture, putting uh, what makes us uh, human at the center of the smart city development uh, was very interesting to follow. I, I really appreciated the, the, the depth uh, and also the very uh, invested and lively discussion during the, the plenary sessions and during the breakout sessions yesterday. So I want again to congratulate the, the organizers and all participants on helping make that possible. Uh, This is a growing community. I think this is a, this is a forum which year on year advances in, its, uh, in what it can achieve. It's becoming a, an increasingly ambitious and an increasingly mature uh, forum. Um, and I think this uh, year's topics have shown that I would uh, encourage and I would look forward to the uh, next year's uh, uh, forum uh, picking up reflecting on what we have done uh, here in d a e j o n this year, how we have advanced the, the concepts of the smart uh, city, uh, and perhaps have an opportunity to reflect on that next year to create uh, a sense of, of continuity and to build on the successes and the experiences that we've had together. So with that, a uh, very uh, warm uh, congratulations and a thanks from uh, UNESCO uh, to our co-organizers and the long-standing uh, partners in the WTA, uh, Daejeon Metropolitan uh, City, for making this fantastic event possible uh, year after year. We are uh, truly grateful, so thank you very, very much for that.
Thank you, Hans. Okay, let me uh, explain what would be process of this meeting. Uh, for the last three days, we got uh, seven sessions, three uh, plenary sessions and post-symmetric sessions. So the moderator of each session will have five minutes in summarizing and uh, present okay, uh, key issues and what kind of implementation they got. We will uh, begin with uh, plenary session one. This time the moderator is not here, so instead of him, Kelluchi Kalu will okay, uh, present what they discussed and uh, what kind of implication they got. You have five minutes. Please start. I didn't quite catch what you want me to speak on, please. Uh, okay, uh, the song, Dr. Song was supposed to report what was discussed during the first session, but I am not very uh, know in detail what kind of deals were done between you and the song, but you were supposed to report. Um. Thank you for uh, the assignment. I'm just getting it now. And so um, what I will share with you are my recollections from that first session, which uh, saw two keynote speakers, uh, Dr. Orr and Philip Ben, who uh, provided us insights on different dimensions, origins, of a smart city conversation with a focus, of course, on career, and Philip giving us a different take to look more closely at how uh, we can bring people into the center of the conversation. This was followed by discussions uh, on the panel that I participated on with a presentation that was focused on Taiwan a presentation focused on Vietnam and another presentation that was uh, focused on India. And then I did a general presentation on policies that should undergird uh, smart cities. One theme that connects all that presentation are, is simply the fact that cities to be sustainable in the future what we do today matters. How we connect universities to governance, to planning and implementation. The other thing that came up as part of the conversation was for us to think about ultimately why we do what we do, which is we work to enhance a human life, the quality of life. And if that is the case, a question that was asked in second session was derived from that first section, which was, which comes first, smart city or smart people? From the first session, I think we clearly answered the question. When we are thinking about smart cities, we have to think about the human resources as a precondition, not just human resources, but quality of life as a precondition for our plans and how we go about implementing those policies, working in coordinated ways to move away from silos into coordination, collaboration, and implementation. Thank you. Thank you for your summary. And I will let the report, uh, okay, uh, summarize again. And there was a uh, very human side of a city and was focused and stressed in that session. That's what I understand. And this time, thank you for your presentation on time. As preliminary session two was uh, moderated by Kim Myung Jun, head of ETRI. Uh, you have five minutes to present what was done in your session. Yes, thank you. Uh, as you show, we, we have a nice, uh, nice speakers from uh, uh, Madame Taina Tukianen. Yeah, it's always difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, we have three panelists. We had a th three panelists, one from uh, uh, Yamashita Jun, 
a professor from uh, Kita Kyushu, Japan, and uh, uh, Korean panelist, two Korean panelists, uh, President Che Suman from uh, Daejeon Techno Park, and also we invited some young uh, specialist, uh, Oh Myung Tech. He was he is uh, in fact uh, working in the Korea Land and Housing Corporation. So, and uh, in the uh, session uh, keynote speak. Uh, sp uh, keynote presentation, uh, sh she sh uh, showed, showed the excellent and success of the uh, ASPO uh, inno Innovative Garden, Helsinki, Finland. And also, uh, she prepared so nice, beautiful presentation materials, so the audience has, was very happy with that uh, presentation. And finally, she also uh, uh, showed the, the uh, European Union initiative, uh, do I remember well? Uh, at this moment, there are a digital uh, city challenge, yeah? Ch challenge. At this moment, there are 41 cities, but they have a plan to extend this number to, the, uh, uh, to 100 yeah? wow. in the near future. And the next year, th there will be some call to to invite to jo uh, to invite to join that uh, European uh, initiative network, and uh, uh, the second uh, the panelist from uh, Japan, Professor uh, Yamashita Yamashita Chun, uh, gave a also very interesting uh, interesting presentation. She, uh, he evaluated the first uh, uh, generation of smart city policies in Japan, and uh, the conclusion was that all the numerical target goal has been achieved, and uh, uh, they are preparing now the, the second generation of uh, smart city police, policies based on the society 5.0. 5 that was very uh, interesting, because in the first uh, uh, first generation, they, they try to apply some uh, some technology in the smart city, but in the second generation, uh, uh, the the notion of community is the most uh, uh, important uh, uh, fact. Especially, they are focusing on the aging uh, some solution, find the some solution, cope with the aging problem, and. Uh, uh, so uh, the, they also preparing some smart city platform based on the uh, big data uh, produced from uh, private or uh, public sectors. And uh, Mr. Che, uh, Mr. Mr. Che Suman uh, have shown the real project uh, ongoing in Daejeon uh, metropolitan city. For example, he he show. He presented some uh, actual uh, five citizen safety linked services, which includes some, for example, emergency video support or uh, social weakness support, even emergency assistance, yes, and so on. This, this project uh, has, uh, this smart city project is very concrete and uh, ongoing. Uh, and oh, at the end of his presentation, he uh, he just uh, showed the, the future uh, picture. The name is uh, uh, Data Driven uh, Administration Service for uh, Dejan Citizens. It, it, it was just the first step to introduce that plan. And uh, finally, uh, Mr. O uh, gave uh, uh, several concrete smart city project, project, national or public, uh, private uh, in Korea. Uh, that was also uh, interesting because th that the project was so, con so concrete and uh, ongoing. Uh, I was so happy uh, to moderate when I moderated this plenary session because there were many questions, a list of questions on, uh, through the simple and also there are so many question and answer from audience. So during uh, two hours, we had a, we had a, a, a long list of discussion. And uh, I, I, 
even I prepared some, uh, some question, but I had no time to <laughs> add my personal question to the uh, panelists and the also speakers. In, in this sense, uh, uh, the secondary, sec uh, the plenary session two was a great success. I conclude. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, plenary session one was about policy of smart city. So well, not that much debate, but in <laughs> session two, you handle okay practice. So you oh, might no, no, we don't have a, uh, we don't have any debate. We discussed well, debate <laughs> is good <laughs> for discussion because, because debate the, means you love your topics. You you are passionate. What you talking? So we we welcome debate is good, but in session two you agreed all unanimously to one conclusion that is very good to hear. Okay, thank you for your report. J and just what uh, I want to add uh, okay. to uh, some conclusion. Uh, my impression is, uh, the, uh, as far as the smart city is concerned, every attempt, uh, every tr uh, try is to apply a new technology in this uh, in the project, but uh, one of our conclusion is technology is, is also important, but the most important is the community itself, the human, human uh, life. Yeah. Okay, community is important. As was uh, stressed in keynote for, by two speakers in keynote speech, to a person stressed citizens' well-being, happiness, instead of science and technology. That was we agreed, and we are very happy to hear that at this. Uh, the forum. Okay, this time <coughs> I'm going to give mic to plenary session three moderator, uh, Brad Phillips, New Mexico University professor from USA. You have five minutes to report. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kang. Uh, this session was on uh, platforms for a sustainable smart city, and I think we had a very interesting discussion. I was happy to see that all the participants agreed that we were beyond, had got beyond the idea of handing over the keys to the city to a, a private firm that would uh, lay the platform and the software. Uh, the panelists did not, they agreed on that point, but did not totally agree on where we should start. Uh, some said that we should start with the uh, by carefully mapping the desired social and environmental outcomes, the so-called key performance indicators. Uh, there was a sentiment to start with people, but then uh, uh, some of the panel members went beyond that to say, oh, no, we're not, we're not intending to say start only with individual citizens, but rather with uh, multiple constituent groups uh, uh, institutions in the city, community organizations, and so on. So uh, starting with people can mean starting with, uh, with organizations as well as with individuals. Um, the keynote, our keynote speaker was Raymond Broschler, who's on my left at this table. Um, he urged us to start with the key performance indicators. He shared um, projections of where uh, revenues and investment in smart cities uh, will be in the next years. Uh, he made the distinction between who invests in smart city and who owns the uh, assets of the smart city. And um, this distinction led to the idea that smart cities that own uh, for example, data assets and um, uh, expertise in service provision would be able to trade uh, those with other smart cities in the uh, sharing economy or what he called the zero marginal cost economy. Um, Mohan Avari was the first panel member to speak. He uh, also uh, emphasized the importance of uh, NGOs and non-market players. Uh, he referred to a Deloitte study on the city as a platform. Um, it seemed like a hazy concept, uh, and indeed the, 
other panel members uh, enunciated different ideas about where the platform will come from, and I'll come back to that point in a moment. He uh, advocated that the uh, community organizations and the city should connect with um, corporate uh, programs for CSR, corporate social responsibility. Okay, then uh, Dr. Young from uh, the Annapolis Foundation gave us an eight pillar model of smart city. And uh, Raymond had showed us a four pillar model and a six pillar model. And uh, I thought the eight pillar model was, was quite uh, intriguing and practical, but it just shows that there's still quite a bit of diversity in the concepts of uh, what constitutes smart city and uh, diversity in the ideas of where our attention should be directed as we build smart cities. Um, okay, and, and he agreed that uh, we're headed for a, uh, a direction where cities will be able to share and trade and sell services to each other. Uh, then uh, Dr. Ree from the Technopark um, cited the great uh, progress that the Technopark has made since the 1990s with the uh, impressive numbers of uh, company IPOs and the number of jobs created and the uh, more than 2,000 companies that are now residing in the techno park. His uh, platform idea, of course, was techno park as a platform. And the first day of our gathering, Dr. Oh, Dog Song, uh, put forth the idea of university as a platform. And Raymond Brochler was talking about the city as a platform. So. Uh, it left me hoping that we're not going to see uh, platform wars uh, like the Apple and Google platform <laughs> war <laughs> on the city, uh, on the public uh, arena. And as moderator, I added the idea that um, since we had Techno Park and um, Smart City people on the panel, that um, the uh, Technopolis and STP idea uh, has been all about innovation, but the smart city idea is, as many of the speakers said during the, the three days, that uh, smart city is about efficiency, about reducing waste in uh, transportation, reducing waste in recycling, and so on. But uh, innovation is not efficient. It's messy and inefficient. And um, companies like Apple and Hewlett Packard famously got started in garages, okay, very cheap. Real estate is their primary uh, consideration and uh, not expensive wired uh, infrastructure in the first days of a startup. So for these reasons, I think the, uh, the objectives of uh, Technopolis and the objective of Smart City are somewhat at odds with each other and uh, need to be worked out in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you <coughs> for your question, Amuri. And it, it would be very natural to have some conflict uh, with the same phenomenon. It, it may be different from person to person, I guess that is very natural. And that point we need to okay, exchange ideas. We do not know where we are going. <laughs> we hope, but we, can, uh, we do not get there yet. We hope sooner or later we are going to be there. There is a belief. Sorry to say about this. Okay, th this time I will change over this thematic session. And first session is moderated by Im Ho Shuk, a uh, next president of Women Science Technology Association in Korea. You have five minutes report. Thank you. Uh, our session has been organized to focus how joint research collaboration in environment and health research field would be fostered between Korean and Canadian scientists and engineers who have the best research capability in their field. Besides, along the global trend which women's empowerment and inclusion have been uh, recognized as a major international agenda, which improves social, economic status, and secure, secure diversity in science and technology, we discussed also the strategy to expand the research cooperation network for women scientists and engineers. In our session, we had two distinguished 
by the speakers and three panelists who have various substantial experience related to the environment, health, energy research, and international cooperation. As the first invited speaker, Dr. Jung Sung Kim, Associate Professor in Tallahassee University in Canada, gave his speech on working together one health approach and its application toward Canada-Korea research collaboration. Dr. Kim serves currently as the Director of Health and Environment Research Center in the Faculty of Medicine at Dallahouse University and Vice President of Operations for the Association of Korean Canadian Scientists and Engineers. He introduced a systematic approach on environmental health to achieve better understanding of environmental public health outcomes and to promote multi-sectoral threat to environmental hazard. This multidisciplinary approach includes implementing programs, policies, legislation, and research is a range of expertise such as environmental chemistry, environmental health, public health, and toxicology from Korea and Canada. Besides, he proposed effective strategy to explore the opportunities for research collaboration between Canada and Korea. The other speaker, Dr. Jong Dok Kim, addressed on international SNT cooperation policy programs of Korea. Dr. Kim is the current director of the Office of the Global Program at the National Research Foundation of Korea, NRF, and served as the director of Korea US Science. Science Cooperation Center in USA from 2010 to 2013. He reviewed the overview of NRF, present policy highlight of international SNT cooperation of Korea, and introduced bilateral, multilateral R&D collaboration programs of NRF with Canada, uh, including the procedures to apply for research fund. Because NRF has a wide spectrum of international cooperation program and support researchers' international cooperation activities, he stressed that researchers would be able to get opportunities to interact around the world and participate in global projects. After two speech, we had a panel discussion with representatives of academics and research institute with expertise and experience on pre prevent medicine, nanochemistry, and information technology. They discussed on strat strategy for promoting research collaboration and fostering convergence networking between Korea and Canada in science and engineering. For activating international research cooperation, they proposed that as opinion leader, women scientists and engineers would need to take a role in propagating the necessity of global collaboration and mutual, mutual relation build up. Uh, I do believe that KWSC, UNESCO, and WTA as international NGOs would be able to play a key role in improving the social economic competitiveness uh, for sustainable future. This year's cooperation with international NGOs is the second following the 2017. I expect today would become a strengthening point for partnership among us. Thank you very much. Thank you for your good summary. Okay, at this time, it's the second time for a special session for women to involve in our forum. Thank you for your report. This time goes to uh, special session B, uh, that is the uh, Son Yonggu, the vice uh, director of uh, Chungnam National University Industry University collaboration team. Would you report in five minutes? Okay, I've got Korean document for summary. You may use the interpretation system for correct understanding. Uh, 특별 분과 세션 B에서는 그한 100명 정도의 그 젊은 그 스튜던트의 졸업생들이 참석했는데 아, 청렴 기억과 정신으로 어, 세 분의 연사분이 강연을 해 주셨습니다. 아, 다, 아, 세 가지 다른 영역에서 접근을 한 것으로 보입니다. 
Uh, 첫 번째 연사로는 San Francisco State University College of Extended Learning 학장으로 계시는 Alex Hugh께서 uh, 대학에서의 교육과정으로 학생들에게 기업가가 되고 uh, 성공적인 비즈니스를, 비즈니스를 이끌어갈 수 있게 만드는 학생 교육 모델을 uh, 제시해 주셨습니다. 현재 uh, 충남대학교하고 San Francisco 샌프란시스코 주립대학하고는 이제 두 대학 간 글로벌 취업 창업 교육에 대한 협력을 이제 지금 막 시작하고 있습니다. 어, 이 모델은 대학에서 이제 학생들에게 어, 기업가 정신의 기반을 다지는 과정으로 사용하면 좋을 것으로 이렇게 생각이 됩니다. 어, 두 번째 연설로는 보스턴 뉴 잉글랜드 메디컬 이노베이션 센터의 리디아 신 대표께서 저 왼쪽 편에 she under left side 예. 어, 미국의 헬스케어 쪽의 이노베이션과 그 기업가 정신에 대해서 말씀해 주셨는데 어, 전 세계적으로 헬스케어 시장 이제 거대하기 때문에 만약에 이제 헬스케어 쪽에 관심을 가지는 시는 분이 계신다면 리디아신 대표로부터 대학 실험실에서부터 기술을 발굴하고 예, 스타트업으로 키우는 과정에 대해서 많은 것을 배울 것으로 이렇게 생각하고 있습니다. 예. 그리고 세 번째 연설로는 하드웨어 엑셀러레이터 N15 컴퍼니의 허재 공동 대표께서 이제 제조업 분야 즉 하드웨어 스타트업을 발굴하고 지원하는 과정에 대한 좋은 신뢰들을 보여주셨는데 아, 특히 뭐그 제조 분야 시작, 시제품 제작에서 투자 유통에 대한 전체적인 제조 기반 스타트업 해결책을 찾고자 한다면 어, M15 회사 그쪽과 좋은 파트너가 되면 좋겠다고 이렇게 생각이 되고 있습니다. 어, 이제 제가 대학에서 이제 교육하는 입장으로 보면 기업가 정신에 이렇게 얼마나 창의적이고 도전적이고 같이 협력하고 인재 발굴 이제 인재 발굴이 우선적이라고 이렇게 할수 있을 것 같은데 어, 창의적이고 도전적이고 같이 협력한다는 관점에서 이렇게 제안하건데 이것은 사실 그 스마트 시티가 되기 위해서. 어, 조금 이제 교육적인 측면, 그 유치원 교육부터 이렇게 저는 개인적으로 이게 사람에 대한 진정한 교육 이런 것을 전체적으로 해야 될것 같습니다. 그 어제도 그 이게 사람이 중요하다, people is important 그 관점에서 연설을 해주신 분이 계셨는데 어떤 시스템 측면, system is also important and also for the important thing is people. 예, 그 관점에서 보시면 사실 저희 대학은 그 교육, 인재 발굴, 그곳의 책임감을 많이 느끼고 있습니다. 감사합니다. Okay. Thank you for your report. This session, the B was about, as you see in front, youth entrepreneurship in Korea. We do not have good record in job creation from university. University do not have, I guess, a duty to make a job for every graduate student. The government uh, hope to provide them good jobs, but that is out of their capacity. So we cannot ask anybody, and we cannot give any responsibility of, of generating jobs. So we discuss a lot and okay, <laughs> wanted to create jobs, but it's not easy at all because we wanted to innovate science and technology. More we advance, push ahead, more job we lose. Then how we can create jobs? That is a big dilemma. We should solve these problems. We w should work together in the future to solve this conflict. Okay, thank you, and <clears throat> I'm going to uh, transfer my mic to Spain, Javier, uh, the Spain Science Industry Association, and they have very nice semantic session. You have five minutes, Javier. 
Thank you. Our special session counted with a very nice uh, panel composed by uh, a representative of CERN, probably the biggest laboratory on the earth uh, on high energy physics. Uh, another representative uh, for uh, uh, another uh, infrastructure to be that is being built here, an accelerator, a special accelerator that is being built in Daejeon. Uh, Dr. Kwon, that is uh, the, the director of this project, uh, an amazing project. We count also with uh, Mr. Pablo Redondo, that comes also from another research infrastructure, but this time from a different department, the department that is devoted to help create new startups out of the basic science discoveries and technologies. And uh, last but not least, a representative of one of these uh, startups, a startup that uh, nowadays is a leader in uh, synchronization equipment for uh, special events. And uh, that uh, company uh, began and, uh, and was founded out of a technology uh, recently uh, uh, developed in a research infrastructure. So our special, the, the objective of our special session was uh, but to present and discuss the role of science, scientific research facilities, and related industry as drivers of innovation with two important perspectives. The first one, as relevant sources of knowledge and technology transfer, and the second one, as main tool to cope with present human challenges. The matter was presented from the point of view of each one of uh, the panelists, as you see, different perspective in order to have a complete frame. And uh, as a resume, we can say that uh, we have a stress the importance of universities, other education centers, scientific infrastructures and related organizations, technology transfer facilitators, science industry, companies, specialized business innovation centers, and so on, and uh, was highlighted as uh, main vital components for smart cities. Uh, our thought was if science, technology, and innovation are at the base of smart cities, we should include in a relevant manner the organizations where science and technology are developed inside the concept of smart cities. Uh, those organizations are not on the cloud, should be there, and provide a fast transfer procedure between them and other productive and service sectors. Also, it has been stressed that those knowledge-intensive institutions and organizations are key elements to develop, sustain, and evolve a smart city. They are a guarantee that the people living there will be the owners and good users of the advantages of a smart city. Without them, the smart city would stagnate and decay fast. Also, another important point has been uh, to stress that those organizations are poles for attracting talent. Okay, that, that was all. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. <coughs> this time, for the first time in WTA Forum, some experts from CERN participated and they presented us very good ideas. We appreciate your devotion and for this forum. Thank you. <coughs> this time I'm going to give a mic to Raymond from UNIDO. Would you summarize within five minutes? Thank you very much. And the last parallel session was about Industry 4.0. And uh, obviously the panelists, uh, there was a kind of diversity and on purpose to have a kind of a representation and inclusiveness. And the first presenter, as you can see here, was coming from a Fraunhofer, which is a research and development institutions, but the office in uh, Korea. And uh, he started obviously telling us you have opportunities, but he stressed more the challenges regarding the industry 4.0 trends, saying there is an ongoing change on the global value chain. And so it means the developing countries, emerging countries need to define new strategy, 
they need really also to pay attention in order to not be left aside. And from that message, I think it was just saying, hey guys, things are changing and you need to be vigilant. And so this was the role after that for the international organization. And I think here uh, we have the photograph of Yoslan Nu, but was represented by Hans uh, here. And Hans has to uh, stress the role of UNESCO and myself, the role of UNIDO on helping emerging countries, developing countries, on creating their ecosystem, on obviously restabilizing their innovation base and the capacity themselves to be part of the international trends by doing obviously capacity building, policy, coherence, advice, partnership with maybe international corporations, and so by helping those countries to be part of the international ecosystem, let's call it like that. And uh, we had the presentation uh, from Seychelles, Jessica Dunyanville, coming from a seeds, small island, was also part of the really on purpose what we wanted to have on ground. How those small countries could be part of this international industry for all development, digital, because they are so far from all the mainland where capacities have been. And it was very, very good to, to listen to uh, Jessica showing how innovative financing could help them not to do only procurement on some technologies they wanted to have, to save their problems, the problems of the climate change, the problem of really saving the resource they have, the sea, the fisheries, the ecosystem there. And it was very good to say that the innovative fin uh, financing through international organization, the World Bank programs, could help them not to be left out of the industry 4.0, but to be really part of, of that and to use new technologies. And uh, the last presentation was from uh, Mr. Zhang from China, presenting and coming specifically presenting the additive manufacturing, the 3D printing, to say how the new technologies, one of the new technologies, could help a country to do better what they used to do traditionally. China was considered as a kind of the manufacturing place of the world. He said, with 3D printing, we use it. Now we are having less. We are designing better. We are saving also the environment. And we are doing it customizing. And this is very good word. Customizing, so it means people at the center. We serve the purpose of singularly every person is giving us business to. And I think it was a great message to say, we can do it, we can focus, we can select the technologies we need. And it was also interesting to listen to SAMA, because SAMA is what we wanted, is the private sector business associations. During this, these two days, three days, we heard that, okay, private sector have been having maybe the main role here, we need somehow to balance the role with the government, with the university, and they were showing that we are part, but we serve people. We would like really to be part of the system helping for humanity. The conclusion of this uh, parallel session was it's a very important innovation to help countries, obviously, to be part of that. So every innovation ecosystem need to be uh, rethink, need to be strengthened. So, and what we talk about innovation ecosystem, it is about the government, it's about the knowledge-based institutions, it's about industry, we don't have to also to cancel them. It's about also even financial, or financing companies of those who need also to bring the finance to help also the investment to happen. And we said it's about also not only smart manufacturing, is about smart circular economy, is about smart agropoles, it's about smart renewable energy, it's about smart, so all the others to serve the purpose of smart cities. 
in a nutshell, it was very enriching for me, for I think the international organization. But what we would like here is the inclusiveness to serve humanity and people. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond, <coughs> for your good report. I wanted to say something funny because we human beings like smart city or smart organization, smart something. That I learned from my name of apartment. I am living nearby apartment. Name is Smart City. That is not city, that is building. <laughs> we have six buildings, apartment, but they named it Smart City by giving that name. People are more interested and willing to buy more, okay? So it's business speaking, very successful. So like that, we do not know what would be the Smart City, but we like it. We like on the, that term, right? That theme. So why don't you, why not? We can go it, right? We can go it. Okay, this is time. We spent three days to digging on and discussed about what should be or would be smart city in the future. We do not know yet, but we should summarize at the moment. We have limit, but we should summarize what we got for the last three days. Our, the, the staff member of Secretariat Office observed what was discussed. For the last three days, we made a draft here. So in front of you, you may have it. Everybody may have written documents of 2019 Global Innovation Forum communique. It is just a draft. So we will take about 30 minutes break. And meanwhile, the representative of each semantic session, four gentlemen should make one paragraph. We got to include that paragraph in this communique. It, this document still do not include the a summary of semantic session. Ordinary plenary session already included the, the remarks or, semi, or summary. So you give us, after making one uh, okay, paragraph, not wrong sentence, a few sentence, should be very key and okay, abstractive, right? Abstract, then provide us. Then after we get all this done, we meet again and read sentence by sentence. If everybody feel happy, we will close. If we do not close until six, there is no dinner. Thank you. <laughs> we may have 30 minutes break, but before going break, is there any objection or special ideas or suggestions to add something in this communique? You? Yeah, you have. I just have a change in one sentence. I think it's it's in in the paragraph three. Is there something which which is a bit yes? So I will do it within the break. Yes, yes. But during break, you change whatever you want. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> Thank you. We have thirty minutes break, and I wanted to okay help from Philips. You good in using English, so help us in making good sentence. Thank you.